So our last topic is to discuss the role of symmetries in classical field theories, and then we're going to extend uh, that to their roles in corner field theory. However, before we do so, let me review the symmetries of Minkowski space, because that's where corner field theory takes place. So what is Minkowski space? Minkowski space is a space where transformation between inertial frames leave this interval squared invariant. So if x mu is an event, then we can make the transformation where the transformation of x mu, it goes to x mu prime, where x mu prime is the coordinate of that event in this new inertial frame. And it could even be a Lorentz transformation. And that's going to, you know, keep this in this interval invariant. But there's another transformation we can do, which is even more obvious, which keeps this interval invariant, and that's translation. So this is Lorentz invariant, Lorentz transformation. And then we can also do translations. So what are translations? It's just moving in space and time. So if I just translate my whole space by a constant amount, so A is a constant, both in space and time direction or in any direction, then that is also going to leave this invariant, that it should be quite obvious. So this is a group called the translation group, these transformations. And the translation group is isomorphic to the group of additions R4, so four copies of the real line. This is a abelian group. So the Lorentz group and the translation group together form the Poincaré group. So the Lorentz transformations, which of course form a group, and if we add to them the translation, so the translation group, then you get what is known as the Poincaré group. And this is an extremely important group for quantum field theory. So the Poincaré group consists of four by four Lorentz matrices and a four, uh, a four tuple, which encodes the translation. So this is a Lorentz transformation, this is translation. And they act on, say, some event x mu in the following way. You first apply the Lorentz transformation, sorry, on your coordinates and then you add to it the translation. So, um, you know, symbolically we can write this in a neater form. So we can suppress the indices. So this acts on X in the way where lambda acts on X and then you add A. So what is a group composition law? So suppose we have two consecutive uh, transformation of this group. So the first one is the lambda one A1 acting on X, and then it takes you to, takes me to lambda one of X plus A1. And let's call this say X prime. And then we apply another group element lambda two A2 on x prime and then then x prime goes to lambda 2 acting on x prime plus a2 but what is x prime 
x prime is nothing but lambda 1 x plus a1. So if we now simplify this, we get lambda 2 lambda 1 acting on x plus a translation which consists of lambda 2 acting on a1 plus a2. So we can see that the composition of these two transformations, so the first we apply lambda 1 a1 and then we apply lambda 2 a2, that is the same thing as lambda 2 lambda 1, the Lorentz transformation, and for the translation it's lambda 2 acting on a1 plus a2. So this is the group composition law of the Poincaré group. And you know the combination of two groups, the Lorentz group and the translation group Who, which results in such a group composition law, you know, this combination is called a semi-direct product. So this is, we can say that the Poincaré group is the semi-direct product of the Lorentz group and the translation group.